Rockstar Gravel Route is a 250 mile route that goes from Harrisonburg, Virginia to Roanoke, Virginia. It has 27,000 feet of climbing and goes through the mountains in between those two cities. The course goes through this just amazing uh, region of Virginia through those mountains there. And I'd originally heard of the course when Jeremiah Bishop went for the fastest known time back in 2019 and he set the record. And this was before I'd even got into ultra cycling but I just remember seeing it and thinking that that was super cool and that you could cover 250 miles on your bike and just going, trying to do it as fast as possible. It just is like completely a personal challenge and it's just up to you on how fast you want to push. I mean, there's nobody else you're racing and all there is is a, a stopwatch and, and just you out there doing it. <laughs> Once we got down to Harrisonburg, we got to uh, Shenandoah Bike Shop where we we're going to meet Jeremiah Bishop and I was going to get some more insight on the course and um, what to expect the next day. From what he said, one of the cruxes of the course was going to be Reddish Knob, which was the uh, which is one of the first climbs going out of Harrisonburg. So I was pretty surprised that that a crux of a 250 mile ride would be just like 30 miles in, but the next day I definitely learned why. After finishing with him, we met up with Abe Kaufman, who also was a former FKT holder um, on the Rockstar route, and I was able to get some more insight from him. When I was pre-riding with Jeremiah, the, my pulley wheel and my derailleur got all seized up, so that was going to be a serious issue if I couldn't get it fixed, but fortunately uh, Brad's e-bike had a matching pulley wheel, so we were able to swap that over to the derailleur, and um, so that was like a miraculous fix at like 10.30 at night. At the hotel that night, we went and we figured out just our last plans for the route. I was going to be going in and out of service, and then they'd be going in and out um, of not being able to follow me when I went into uh, single track and double track sections that a uh, a car couldn't get in. All right, so we want to we want to have the cars loaded up. Yeah, so at out. two thirty we'll yeah. say hello. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Get some sleep, okay. dude. Yeah. It should take him to get down to here. It should take him a half an hour, 40 yeah. minutes, you know. Uh, Woo -hoo! Let's go.
Once I got into the West Augusta store, it was about 57 miles in, and I'm, at this point the ride had really started and I was really getting into it, and I just wanted to get in and out of there as fast as possible. Yeah, yeah, bud. Then I got outside and I just quickly refilled my bottles, and the, all the old timers at the store were asking me what the hell I was doing, so I, did, I talked to them for a second and then got back on my bike and rode back out onto the road. How far you got right? Where you coming from? 250 miles down the road. Big deal. That's what I wanted, man. Yeah. He's trying to break the record. Cool, man. Yeah. Thank you. See you, buddy. We'll see you up there. I got a little too sandy at one point and got a uh, puncture in my tire and um, of course my heart sank when I heard the, the air coming out because I thought that maybe I got like a tire tear or something that I couldn't fix but um, I saw that it was just a puncture and I was able to get off and throw a stand start in it and um, blast it with the CO2 and I didn't lose that much time. I'm gonna consult the map again here. It's about nine o'clock. No broken bones. Let's go. Go, 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 go! Turned on to Sugar Run Road, which is this, uh, this really long 20 mile road that I'd heard about before doing the route. It's 20 miles just through the mountains with there's not like a single turn off or, or anything. So like once you get on the road, you're, you're either going straight through or you're turning back. Halfway up, climbing up the road, eventually this big rainstorm came in. It turned into to pretty close to a downpour after a little bit and um, climbing up it got the temperature started to drop down to like close to 50 degrees. From the West Augusta store to the second gas station, the Whitey store, is about a 90 mile stretch. This was the stretch that I was nervous about with uh, how much water I was going to take. So I was a little bit nervous that this church was going to be closed at mile 110. And so I, uh, I was rationing my water kind of going into that because I was like, worst case scenario, if the church's water is off, then I'll just try to make it to that Whitey store on three bottles, which would be like eight hours or so. But I was really just hoping that this church's water was gonna be on. So after this long, cold pavement stretch, cause I was soaked and it was still raining, I made it to uh, the church at 110 miles and I immediately rode to the back of the church and I went straight to the spigot and the water was on and it was just a huge relief. So I chugged a bottle and then refilled the other three. Immediately just rode back out and hit the road and then um, got back in right after the church You get back into this, uh, this gnarly gravel that was really, um, the roads got super muddy at this point and it was, there's all these leaves on the ground, so I was just really trying to focus on seeing what was leaves and what was rock. Then after a while of that, I believe it was through a state forest, you eventually climb up this uh, this really long climb that you kind of climb up and then it flattens out and climb up and flattens out. And at this point, I kind of, after making the mistake of just buying an ice cream sandwich at that first store, I kind of was paying the price because I was running low on food and I was starting to kind of bonk a little bit. and. I was only about halfway through the ride, so that was one of the harder points of the ride for me. Um, and then, eventually after going through all those muddy roads, I got out and uh, descended down this long gravel descent down to the store where the White East gas station was. Getting into uh, the White East gas station at mile 140, uh, I was pretty depleted and that was one of the harder stretches of the course going from West Augusta all the way to uh, to Whitey's. Got outside and I crushed, uh, I crushed the three hot dogs probably faster than I ever had before, so 
I went full Joey Chestnut mode on those and then um, drank uh, drank the sodas and yeah I knew that I just really had to like eat as many calories as I could so my bike was barely shifting so I poured a bottle of water on uh, on my bike's drivetrain to try to clean off some of that dirt. And then once I left Whitey's, the sun started to come out again, and, and I was really excited because I was hoping that uh, that the roads would start to uh, dry out. After the pavement stretch, eventually I crossed this really cool bridge and went into um, another more remote part of the course called uh, Patterson Creek Road. It's like, holy cow, mile, what is it, mile 190 or something like that? And you just went up 700 feet, probably averaged 12 to 15% grade, like, like nothing. Unbelievable. So good. Eventually got to this road, wilderness road, where I climbed back up into the mountains and um, there was another of these creek crossings that I know uh, the Brad and the film crew, they couldn't make it across so they eventually had to turn back. The last gas station stop, which was at mile 204, and at that stop I just grabbed some pizza and I think I filled up my bottles with Dr. Pepper. Like it's, he, has, he has basically 58 miles to go. So okay. If he, does, so he's, he, he's if he averages like, if, you take, if it takes him five hours to finish, probably going to take him five hours. Probably not, but it's sort of slow. It is sort of slow on a carpet's coat. Yeah, he's definitely looking pretty good right now. Okay. Let's put dips on. I, I'd say he's going under 19. I'm going to say he's going to 18 hours and 45 minutes. I think that maybe even 1830. He was so far ahead of the guy. What, what, what was the Kaufman? What, his time was 1940 or something like that? Yeah, 1948. Incumbent, he was already like potentially like 25, 30 minutes ahead of the guy. And I think he's just sped up since then. So I think he's going to be like an hour ahead of him. made it to uh, Texas Tavern, I think it was at 1013.
it's just it's always crazy like getting a big rod like that done because just like so much stuff happens over the last 19 hours or 18 hours and um, you go through so many of these highs and lows that like you go through points where you think that getting it done is going to seem like seems almost impossible and then you go through points where you're just having so much fun just riding your bike and covering all this distance. I was just feeling good on the climbs all day, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> 